Okay, in this problem, we're referring to a table from our last video, and I'll scroll up and take a look at it. But now what we're doing is we're filling this table out here with the previous information. So let me scroll up. Here's the last table. There are our numbers. You might want to pause it, take a snapshot of that, and then press play when you're ready to solve it together. Okay, so now we are looking at age categories and yes or no or no answer how they voted. We're not looking at whether they're male or female. We're trying to keep our measures to two to create what's called a two frequency table. And if we go back, I'll just show you what the first one is. Uh, we look at our first age range, 18 to 25. I'm combining all of my yeses here, which would be 61, right, 32 plus 29, and all of the noes, 14, and all the no answers, and then entering those numbers in here, right? You've got 61, 14, and 2. Altogether, that's 75. We fill that in, and then we repeat the process, and we go to the next row, and the next row, and the next row. So when we fill these numbers in, right, we get 113, 84, 6, I'm just looking at my notes here, 203, bear with me, 66, 79, 4, 149, 33, 53, 2, and 88. I don't like that 8. Let me fix that. 88. Um, and then our last row, so our, this row right here is a total of these columns. We're just going to add those columns up, and we get 273, 230, 12, and 515. Now, a couple of things here. This number will always be the grand total of everyone involved in your study. These numbers here on the margins are the totals of, this is the total of columns, the total of rows, and those are called your marginal probabilities. I'm going to label that. Right? These are the marginal probabilities. They're in the margins of the table, essentially. A marginal frequency is not probability. It's a probability if it's a percent, but these are just counts, so they're frequencies. On the inside here, these are called uh, joint frequencies because they represent the intersections, essentially, of different columns and rows. So like 61, take that as an example. That's at the intersection of this row and this column. Imagine that row and column are like two beams forming this joint right here where those two beams cross. That's how I remember it. it they're called joint frequencies or probabilities, depending on the measurement you're given. These are frequencies because they're just counts, right? They're just literally frequencies, so joint frequencies. And now what we have is a two-way table. It's two ways because the first way reads as age or yes, no, that what their choice is in the vote. Okay, now we scroll down. So question four says, a local news service plans to write an article summarizing the survey results. Three possible headlines for this article are provided below. Okay, is each headline accurate or inaccurate? Support your answer using probabilities calculated using the table above. So try it out and then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. The first one says, Waldo voters likely to support building a new high school. All right, well, I'd say yes. If you look down here at our first marginal frequency here, 273, that's all the yeses out of 215 people. Okay, so I'm gonna write 273 over 515. That's about 53%. And I'd say, yes, it's greater, right? It's greater than 50%, so it works. Then the next one says, older voters less likely to support building a new high school. Well, where's old, where's young? That's that's relative. On a test in class, of course, you'd be that would be specified, but this is more of an open problem. So let's call this old. 40 and older, sorry, we're calling you old. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And 40 or less young. So older, let's say again, older than 41 is old. Oh boy. Older than 40 is old. 40 and younger is considered young. So up to 40, young. Over 40, old. That's what I should have said. Okay. So older voters, well, there are how many? There are 99 of them that voted yes. Out of what? Well, we can add up um, all these numbers here, but we've already summed them up in, in this in these two cells right there. That's 237. So 99 out of 237. 
And I would say, well, that's about, what is that? I think it's 44% I wrote about. And I'd say, is that true? Yeah. Again, yes. Because it's less than 50%. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm saying 50% because I'm assuming in, in this voting process, if you get less than 50%, it doesn't pass. That's not specified. That's an assumption I'm making. Finally, we have younger voters not interested in building a new high school. Okay, well, let's take a look at our young, younger, younger ones here. Uh, this is the young group right here. And the young group that voted yes is 61 plus 113. So that, what is that, 174? So 174 younger voters out of 203 plus 75, which is 278. So now we've got a probability in there. And I, I don't have it. I'm just scrambling for my calculator. Okay, so it's 174 divided by 278. It's about 63%. I'd say no. I don't agree with this headline. Bogus. It's wrong. Uh, they, they voted yes more than 50% of the time. So here, um, that means they're more likely to actually support it and they are interested. So there are some subjective terms in here, but I think otherwise we can analyze it. All right, I hope that helped.